You know here at DFB, we're going to help you with the big stuff. Dining reservations, booking your hotel room. But what about the teeny tiny details that are so worth remembering that you've never heard about? Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today I'm talking about the 12 little things that make a big difference in Disney World. Now these are things that very few people know about or even do, but if you do them, you're gonna be able to save money, navigate the parks much more easily, and even be able to plan for potential meltdowns when you're in the parks. And if that sounds good, let's get started. First tip is a huge tip. You're gonna learn what's closed before you go. Disney World's kept us all on our toes lately. A closure here, an opening there, and it's a lot to keep up with. But if you're planning on going to Disney World soon, studying up on what's open and what's not before your trip is gonna save you a lot of heartbreak. For instance, Finding Nemo the Musical over in Disney's Animal Kingdom is currently being reimagined and isn't gonna open until sometime in 2022. In Magic Kingdom's Walt Disney World Railroad, which closed back in 2018, is still undergoing major refurbishments, but is predicted to reopen hopefully in 2022, but only time will tell. So if you've got a kiddo who loves the train, yeah, you're gonna have to make sure they're prepared to not ride it this year. Now, many times Disney World will schedule ride renovations, what we call refurbishments, around their non-peak seasons like January and February. So even if rides aren't permanently closing, they may still be unavailable during your trip. And this is really, really important information to know, especially if one of these rides is your favorite or the favorite of somebody that you're traveling with. So Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain over there in Animal Kingdom, that guy's scheduled for a three-month closure next year for some TLC and refurbishment. This closure is gonna last from January 4th to mid-April, and that's huge. That means it takes you all the way through spring break. The Disney Skyliner system that transports guests over to Epcot and Hollywood Studios is gonna have a brief period of renovation time between January 23rd and January 28th, where it's gonna be unavailable. So if you're like staying at Art of Animation because of the Skyliner during that five days, you want to know about that. Then there are the rides that are still in development, like Tron, Light Cycle Run, and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which are supposed to open sometime next year, we think. We don't have any exact dates for either ride, but if these thrill rides are one of the main reasons you're looking to return to the Disney parks, then you may want to hold off on making any concrete plans until they announce their specific opening dates. Even if you stay vigilant and learn about the ride and show closures ahead of the time, some Disney World attractions might still manage to surprise you. And those surprises cannot be the best surprises. At the end of August this year, fans of Epcot's Living with the Land ride were disappointed to see it randomly close for a week. The ride is reopened now, but sometimes that stuff just happens. These rides are high tech and vulnerable, meaning they'll need fixing at some point in time. And as much as we wish we could snap our fingers and get all the kinks worked out for those Disney Imagineers, it sometimes takes a bit of work to get those things back on track. So to get the most recent updates on attraction closures and openings, you can check in with me. Great place for some self-promotion, right? but it's true. The DFB reporters are in the parks every single day. And we release weekly updates both on YouTube and on our website to keep you in the loop on what's happening in the parks, which includes any unexpected or very expected ride shutdowns. So as always, we got you covered here at DFB. Number two on our list of little things that make a big difference in Disney World, requesting rooms close to bus stops. So if your resort only uses bus transportation and there are only one or two shuttle stops at your hotel, you may want to request a room closer to these locations ahead of time. When you're staying at one of Disney's hotels that's more spread out, like Coronado Springs or Pop Century, you're liable to end up in a hotel room far away from one of the bus stops. No, those rooms aren't bad rooms, but at the end of a full day in the parks, you'll be wishing that you didn't have to walk an extra half mile or so on top of the 20,000 plus steps you've already clocked for the day. Requesting a room near a bus stop is something you can do during the online check-in process on your My Disney Experience app. In order to check into your hotel room, go to the My Plans section of the app and select check-in. From there, you'll be able to make specific requests and you can do online check-in at any time starting 60 days before your vacation. Now, if your particular room request, maybe something like being on a higher floor or being closer to the elevator, isn't listed on the potential room requests you can make, you can always call the hotel and associate that request with your reservation. 
Now, none of this means you'll be guaranteed a closer to the bus stop room or a closer to the elevator room, but if you put in the request, Disney will try to fulfill it. You can also call Disney directly, like I said, to make your request known over the phone. Your odds for getting a room closer to the bus stop are going to be about the same. It all depends on the season and what's available. But if you take nothing else from this particular tip, please remember what I just said about the online check-in process, because honestly, it's a major time saver. By using the My Disney Experience app ahead of time to check into your hotel, you get to bypass that lobby line, which could be really, really long. If you have specialty discounts or circumstances that you need to clarify before check-in, then you'll probably still need to go to the lobby and talk to a cast member in person to make sure everything's all good to go. Otherwise, the My Disney Experience easy check-in process is awesome. They will literally just text you your room number when it's ready, and you can go straight to your room. Such a benefit. Okay, another little thing that can make a big difference in Disney World, mobile ordering meals ahead of time. Now, we're living in the future here, people. Mobile ordering is the way to get your meals at the majority of Disney World's counter service, quick service locations, aka fast food spots. However, mobile ordering lines can be just as long as physical lines, if not longer. So if you wait to mobile order lunch right at lunchtime and you're visiting during one of Disney World's busier seasons, you might find that your meal return time, the little time you can choose to come back and pick up your meal, is already full up and you're gonna have to take a different one. So instead of the app telling you to return in the next 30 minutes, you may not be able to get your food for hours. And if you're already starting to feel the hangries coming on, this is sad news and it's really not gonna help anybody. So what's even worse is when all the mobile order return times are already full, then what? To prevent running into this conundrum, consider mobile ordering your meals beforehand, maybe even as soon as you wake up. That way you can be ahead of the game and you're more likely to be able to choose from a multitude of return times that actually fit your dining schedule. So don't worry about your food getting prepared too early or getting cold before you arrive. Quick service restaurants will start preparing your meal only after you've notified them on your My Disney Experience app that you are at the restaurant. So wake up in the morning, book a time around lunchtime that you think you're going to want to eat, and then go to the restaurant at that time and click I'm here, prepare my meal, and it'll be great and wonderful, and you will get to eat whenever you want to eat. All right, number four, purchasing Memory Maker before your vacation. So are you planning on buying PhotoPass so that you can keep all the embarrassing on-ride photos for this year's Christmas cards? Okay, you can keep all the good photos too if you want. If this is a souvenir you already know you gotta have, then purchase Memory Maker before your trip. If you buy Memory Maker ahead of time, you'll pay $169 for access to all your PhotoPass photos. However, if you wait and purchase Memory Maker during or after your vacation, you're gonna pay $199 for your photos instead. Think of all the Dole Whips you could buy with an extra $30. Here's another option for you. If you're going to Disney with someone who has an annual pass, see if they have the Memory Maker add-on. Memory Maker costs $99 for annual pass holders, and pass holders receive access to all their photos until it's time to renew their card again. Meaning you'd have access to all those photos too, since they're in your travel party. It's nice to have Disney friends. Number five on our list of little things that make a huge difference in Disney World, using break areas if you're feeling overwhelmed. If you or someone in your travel party has a cognitive disability that can flare up from all the excitement going on in the parks, Disney World has designated break areas so you can temporarily escape from the hustle and the bustle. In Magic Kingdom, you can find one of these behind the Ye Olde Christmas Shop in Liberty Square. In Disney's Hollywood Studios, you can find a break area in the courtyard outside the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Epcot has a ton of different break areas, one being in the common area near Mission Space and Test Track. And Disney's Animal Kingdom has break areas too, like the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. You can find a complete list of break areas on the Disney World website. Just access the Services for Guests with Cognitive Disabilities page. From there, you can download a complete guide for guests with cognitive disabilities. Now, the guide will go over frequently asked questions and concerns that'll help assist families while planning their Disney vacations. And of course, even if you don't have a cognitive disability and you're just feeling overwhelmed or overstimulated by everything that's going on in Disney World, go to these break areas. They're usually low key, they're relaxed, they're calm, they're chill, they're quiet. Those are very, very nice places to take a little breather. Number six on our list of 12 things that make a big difference in Disney World, buying popcorn buckets for a cheap snack. Now I know what you're thinking, AJ, popcorn buckets cost a lot of money. 
True, but wait, hear me out. If you decide to purchase a popcorn bucket at the beginning of your trip, then you'll have access to a cheap Disney snack for the rest of your vacation at every park. Popcorn buckets range in price from $10 to $20, depending on the design. And once you make that popcorn bucket purchase, you'll have access to $2 popcorn refills all day, every day throughout the length of your stay. If you plan on getting popcorn every single day and possibly even multiple times a day, this can be a great option for families, especially since a regular Popular popcorn usually costs around $5.25 per box. And the popcorn buckets are transferable, so you don't have to worry about purchasing a bucket in Epcot and only being able to use it in Epcot. You'll be able to use it at every park on property. So keep your eyes peeled for those snack cart locations that offer up the $2 refills. We've already got a whole post leading you through all the different popcorn refill stations in Disney World, so I'll go ahead and link it in the description below. Number seven on our list, bring an extra pair of contacts. Okay, if you wear contact lenses, then listen up. If you don't, then still listen because you might have someone in your travel party who does. And you can relay this info back to them because you are a nice person. No matter the duration of your stay, bring an extra pair of contacts or two pairs or three or four or five. Don't just pack one pair and call it good. So many things can happen to your contacts while you're on vacation. You can lose one while riding a thrill ride. You can fall asleep in a pair and dry them out. You can rip one just by trying to put them in quickly before you head out for the day. Like I'm probably preaching to the choir here. If you wear contacts and you already know how easy it is to lose or tear one of these little guys, I'm just reminding you that your travel bag needs to have extras packed and ready to go just in case. Also, make sure to bring extra contact solution. If you happen to forget yours at home, don't sweat it though. Disney World has first aid centers on property that sell over-the-counter contact solution in case of emergencies. And of course, you can get it at those gift shops in your hotel, but it's just going to cost a lot of money. You can also use mobile delivery services like Shipt or Instacart to order any items you may have forgotten on your trip and get them delivered right to your hotel room. Next on our list is a super, super, super fun one, especially if you've got little kids, and that's have wishing coins on hand. Disney's all about their wishes. Remember that show, Wishes? Good times. You're invited to make some wishes of your own too, while also helping out an awesome cause. All of the coins thrown into Cinderella's Wishing Well, the Expedition Everest queue, the water around It's a Small World, or any fountain or body of water around the parks are collected and used by the Disney company for a charitable cause. In the past, Disney's used the thousands of dollars collected from wishing coins to donate to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Last year, USA Today reported that Disney World had collected around $20,000 in wishing coins, which they used to provide a Thanksgiving feast to Florida's largest homeless shelter. So what are you waiting for? Get your wishing coins ready. It's time to help make some dreams come true. Number nine, use a nifty lock screen on your phone. All right, do you have an itinerary planned out for every day of your trip? Very cool. Now here's a time-saving and battery-saving trick for you. If you take a screenshot of your plans for each day, you can make them the lock screen on your phone. That way you can quickly look at your phone without having to worry about unlocking it, logging into the planning app, and watching that little thing think for a really long time to get you to your plans. It'll also really help save your phone's power and battery. The less you have to be on your phone, the more battery you're gonna save. Number 10 on our list, don't worry about paying for a baby's park ticket. Now, if you're torn about taking your baby to the Disney parks too early, AKA before they're able to remember what it was like to ride Dumbo the Flying Elephant for the first time, Keep in mind that you won't be charged admission for children under three years old. That being said, there will probably be many other expenses that you'll still have to consider for your little one, like stroller rentals, for instance, diapers, those little fans that you clip to the stroller, bubble wands, cute princess dresses. Now you're more than welcome to bring your own stroller to the parks, but if you decide to rent a stroller, you're gonna pay about 13 to $27 per day. Children three to nine years old won't be able to get into the parks for free, but they will have cheaper ticket prices. But once those kiddos hit 10 years old, they'll be welcomed into the wonderful world of adult ticket prices, so it might not be a bad idea to plan on taking your kids to Disney World before they hit that double digit marker. There's a lot of pros and cons with taking your kids to Disney World when they're little versus taking them when they're a little bit older. So we'll have to cover all those in another video. Number 11, expect a busy park day during run Disney events. Now, when I ask you what the busiest times to visit Disney World are, you might jump to Christmas or 4th of July or New Year's Eve, and you wouldn't be wrong. But oftentimes, the run Disney events go under the radar, and they can surprise you with how wild the parks can be. 
In case you've never heard of Run Disney before, here's a quick rundown. Get it? Yeah, we're hysterical. Run Disney is a race where everyone wins. Participants compete in a 5K, 10K, half marathon, or full-blown marathon throughout the Disney parks. And if you're going to run, might as well pick up someplace with a view, right? Don't worry, Florida's hot and all, but these races take place in Florida's cooler seasons. Yes, those actually somewhat exist. Can you imagine attempting a marathon during a Florida summer? No, thank you. And in good Disney fashion, you'll literally run into entertainment along your way. Characters will cheer you on from the sidelines. Live entertainment will motivate you to keep on moving. And let's not forget, you can dress up in fun attire to match whatever the theme of the race may be. Run Disney days are also extremely packed park days. The parks are flooded with those who participated in the 5 to 10K races and are celebrating with Disney rides and snacks galore. The Run Disney crowds are especially prominent when it comes to transportation times in the morning and park crowds in the afternoon. So you can expect some longer transportation times on Run Disney race days because they have to close down a lot of the roads around property for the race and expect long waits for rides and quick service locations in the afternoon when all the runners are in the parks. So don't be caught off guard by these crowds. Instead, know when the races are happening ahead of time. And when are these races happening? Well, the next round of Run Disney races starts November 4th to the 7th for the Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend, which goes hand in hand with Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. The Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend will take place next from January 5th to the 9th, 2022. That's going to be in honor of Disney World's 50th anniversary. From February 24th to 27th, you've got the Disney Princess Half Marathon Weekend and the Springtime Surprise Weekend, which is a brand new Run Disney event, will happen March 31st to April 3rd. Now that I'm thinking about it, if you're interested in being part of these busy days and participating in the events yourself, before you jump all in, make sure to watch my DFB video covering the important things you need to know before you do Run Disney. Or you can say, forget running in crowds and just avoid these days altogether. There are two types of people, you know? Number 12 on our list, watching ride POVs ahead of time with little ones. Disney World has a ton of fun rides for kids and kids at heart, but some of those rides can be unexpectedly scary, especially for kids who've never experienced anything like a Disney attraction before. Don't tell me you didn't close your eyes on Haunted Mansion when you were a tiny tyke, because yes, you did. Now, before you take that first family vacation with your kids, try testing the waters for those potentially scary rides. Watch point of view videos on YouTube for rides like Haunted Mansion, Dinosaur, and It's Tough to Be a Bug, if you really want to subject yourself to that, to see what their initial reaction is like. Then you can decide if the rides should be okay for them, or if some are a bit too scary for now. The great thing about this is that even if your kiddos don't seem too keen on the scarier rides, there are still plenty of rides for them to enjoy around the parks that won't be too intense, too dark, or too loud. Funny enough, not all Disney World rides have an axe murderer bride in them. Who would have thunk? My friends over at All Ears actually have a whole bunch of POV ride through videos on their channel of all the Disney World rides. Thanks, All Ears. I'll go ahead and link their page in the description below. Tell them AJ says hi. Depending on how old your kiddos are, a few scenes in particular you might want to check out are Marshmallow from Frozen Ever After, the Heffalumps and Woozles from The Many Adventures with Winnie the Pooh, and Ursula from Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. I know, Frozen, Winnie the Pooh, and Little Mermaid, are those really rides that could potentially scare kiddos? Well, you'd be surprised. Some of these scenes can be dark, loud, and have some impressive yet chilling animatronics or super trippy and disorienting scenes. And don't forget Test Track. There's that big truck. Now there you have it. There's 12 little things that make a big difference when you're going to Disney World. Ready for a bonus tip? You can join the DFB newsletter to keep 100% in the know on any policy changes or discounts, menu updates, construction, price increases, and refurbishment announcements, and anything else your heart desires to know about the Disney parks. Yeah, we're there all the time. So go ahead and join our newsletter. The link to do so is right there in the description and it's completely free. We cover everything for you and deliver it right to your inbox. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.